All right, so we'll get the defrost fan out of the door and the baffle out and we'll get the thermometer back in. So I don't feel anything anywhere on there. Um, I can see inside it's well defrosted, which means they could have been done quite a while ago. So I'm going to get that pre-cooling and we'll get the food in there just as soon as it gets cold enough. And by cold enough, I want to make sure it's below freezing. Ideally, it would be similar to the freezer, which is about five degrees down to zero degrees. So I want to double check, make sure I've got the seal all the way around. I'm missing a spot right there and right here. I'm just using my little palette knife and giving it a little bit of a twist to make sure that I see that ring all the way around. So even for pre-freezing, I like to make sure that air is not going across there. Uh, so that it doesn't ice up the seal itself. So get the drain valve closed. Drain valve is closed. So I'm going to get it started. And continue. So it's currently 66 degrees. And as soon as that's down to maybe 30, 20, uh, so that it's dropping well, then we'll get the food in the, on the trays and get it in. Freeze dryer is pre-cooling right now, and as soon as that's cold, we'll get the food in. Uh, this next six batches are going to be for other people's food. So we're doing my sister's food, or she's going to be doing it, and I'll try recording some of it. Um, and we'll be loading that into a bin also, so again, we can see how much 500 pounds is. So we'll be tracking that. Hers could be a little lighter, a little heavier. We'll see as it goes. So we'll play along with however, whatever batches come along. Okay, so we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, more strips of parchment paper for this set. Each one is in 17 and a quarter inches. And that fast, we have four of them. And when they stay nice and clean and it's the same kind of product, I use them more than once. So if we assume that the double roll pack of these from Costco is about 10 bucks, then that works out to about 2.2 cents per sheet on these. And you end up with this really cool fin roll for freeze drying your spaghetti. Potentially spaghetti squash too, if you can stretch it out. So it's been pre-cooling for just over an hour now and it's down to two degrees. So going to get stuff on trays and get them in tray one of other people's food. So this first set is, so I'm going to write that down. These are cooked ground beef. Okay, hamburger cooked. 93.7%. Okay, so that's what it is. And they're all in little half pound blocks or something similar. 747 52750 Okay Should write on it. Some of them are too far. Oh, you treats. Tray 1. Okay, that's it. That well, obviously that's it. You can't put more on there. Uh, 1857 okay and then this is what it is yes. and it will slip that I'm going to lift this up and put it underneath completely let's see where we can get a thermometer in there mm -hmm. 
And then the goal is to get the thermometer in there without it shooting through and drilling into my fingers. Unless you have video and then it's still okay. Tray one, thermometer one. And tray two, nice frozen trays. All right, and the label of what it is. I'll tuck that underneath. We'll probably find it later. And cooked ground beef like this has a lot less moisture, so it tends to freeze dry pretty quickly. And for those that might be concerned, that's not fat, that's just ice. Not that I would care anyway. Okay, now I'll go kind of over the top of this one and aim for that one. Let's see, I might be able to turn it around a little bit. There we go, and get that angle. Nice little borehole. Oops, I wanna get the weight of this at this point. 1866 and tray three are all these the same mm -hmm. no, and I, then I'm no going taco to seasoning. okay I'm going to rotate this one this way because that's taller and I can get into there okay or even over to here. See if that's deep enough. Okay, 1857. I think the cold is affecting these when they're like that. It starts to change the weight slightly. So these are without? Yes. Okay. Is that good enough? <laughs> W-O that way? That's fine with me. As long as two days from now I remember that was with. Well, hopefully, if they stay like this, it's obviously, it's very visual. Okay. And as I've mentioned multiple times, Drilling holes in your food is not a requirement and stuffing thermometers in there is not a requirement. I just like to know and people always ask for more data. This gives me more data and I can look through the window and as the temperature starts to go up, I'll know it's getting closer to jumping to a final dry time. To the final dry. So it usually will let me know a few hours ahead of time that that's getting closer because the temperature on those thermometers will start to climb up above 20, 30 degrees. And so it gives me a heads up. And I forgot to put the weight down, 1769. Okay, so those are ready to go in the freeze dryer. So we'll wheel them over and get them in. Okay, all the blocks are over there. Freeze dryer's been going for almost an hour, 20 minutes. It's down to negative seven. We're going to get them thrown in there real quick or placed in there nicely real quick. And that's got a good ring around the door. So here it's good seal. So starting at the top with tray one, and that currently says 20 degrees on that thermometer. Same with that one. Okay. 
Okay, so they're all showing about 20 degrees right now. Want to make sure I get that seal ring all the way around again, and I do. Okay, the seal's all the way around. Uh, the first batch of other people's food is in there. Uh, so that is cooked hamburger or ground beef with spices and without just different things. It should actually freeze dry pretty quickly. Uh, the cooked things like this tend to go very fast. So we'll be back in a day or two and it'll be done. The hamburgers had almost an extra four and a quarter hours uh, for timing. So it was going to be finished when it wasn't going to be down here. So added a bunch of time, about four and a quarter hours, and it still has about a half hour left. So right now it would be about four hours uh, if I jump through 15 minutes of it. So we're gonna skip the last of the time, weigh it, put it back in, and see if it was already dry. I suspect it should be dry. The temperatures are up real nice, the pressures are down real low, and it had extra four hours. So it had a total of about 15 hours of final dry time. So a lot of time with the heaters on and drying. So it should be dry already, but we'll get out, weigh it, and check it, make sure that it's dry. Trust, but verify. Okay, so arrow past the last of it. and open the drain valve okay so starting with this one 1078 okay and two 1135 1123 and 1078 okay yeah I suspect these are all very very dry and it's such a low fat ground beef that it doesn't seem to have put any greases or anything on the plastic shield because usually with ground beef or anything that has what we consider a lot of fat which is not very much then we cover it with paper towel pieces before we put it in but it's been a while since we've done any forgot that on here and got away with it because it's just such low fat okay going back up So on ones that uh, have a lot of fat, you can see like a line from the edge of the tray outward on the plastic shield if it's kind of splattering off little bits of fat. That's why we'll cover them with a paper towel. But these are so lean, there isn't anything on here. So we got away with it. Uh, but that's what we usually use. But this was very lean and with the other things mixed in here and knowing my sister cooked to death, um, that's usually not an issue. So, uh, we'll probably have some in the future. Well, I know we'll have some in the future where we'll show putting a piece of paper towel over it and the results. Um, I think we had one earlier too that I was concerned with and had teeny teeny spots on it so it had almost nothing anyway so we'll get it restarted and give it two more hours and then weigh it put more dry time and close the drain valve it'd be amazing how many times I'd forget that if it wasn't written there and continue and it's plenty cool at all times really and we'll give it 15 extra so we can get a full two hours we'll be back in two hours don't go away we'll be right back the filter system is pumping right now 
going to give it a little shake. And a few little water droplets are going down there. So I try to remember to do that occasionally. Anyway, that just gets any water droplets. But you can see how clear that is. It's nice, clear oil still. Because it's being filtered about 15 seconds every minute for the entire time of the process. It's down to 18 minutes. So in about three minutes, the heaters will turn off if they're on. Currently, they're not on. You can tell because of the power usage. The tray temperatures are about 120, 120, 120, and the top one's about 110. And the pressure's right nice and low. Going to aero past it while they're still nice and toasty. And I'm going to unplug the timer for the oil filtration, then open the drain valve. And check the weights. Okay, I'm going to start with down at the bottom with tray one. And 1078, no change. I'm not terribly surprised there's no change. Uh, it had an extra almost five hours. Uh, so it's had lots and lots of dry time. Uh, tray two. And no change on that. Tray three. Eleven twenty three. No change on that. And these are still very nice and warm. The trays are 120 degrees, so I don't have to worry about any kind of uh, issue with condensation because they're toasty. And 1077. And bouncing up. So maybe a fraction of a gram, maybe just a difference on where the scale is setting. They are all good. I'm going to press no defrost. Ah, make it so much quieter in here. I'm going to pull the thermometer out from underneath. The one stuck in the ice. And get the defrost fan in place. All right, and the defrost baffle. Uh, so here's the water from the white bean chicken chili, the last batch. So you can see it's fairly close to a gallon, um, about seven pounds or so of water, seven and a half pounds. So it's still more than I'd really like to have in a batch, but that's not too bad. Okay, so we'll get this defrosting, get it ready for the next batch. So for time, we've got 40 and a half hours, but we know that it was dry before that because when we checked it, uh, it didn't lose weight during the last two hours. So I'm gonna subtract two hours off of that and call it 38 and a half. Uh, we know that it was dry sometime before that. We just don't have any way to know how much. So anyway, we'll use 38 and a half. So the power usage for the hamburger was 26.68 kilowatt hours. So we'll reset that and get it ready for the next one. Right, so now it's ready for the next set. The 3.5 watts is what the electronics of the harvest right is using right now. So that's the minimum as long as it's plugged in and turned on with the display and everything. Uh, the cooked hamburger is finished. Uh, now we'll get the gross weights or we'll get all the weights and calculate out per pound. And then she'll be bagging them in portions that make more sense to her. Then we will be putting them in a bin so that we can still track them and show the whole 500 pounds before she carts them away. So we'll get the weights and then get them bagging. Tray one, get the thermometers out and get the uh, current weights. Okay, so 10, 68, tray 2, 1125, tray 3, 
eleven thirteen. And ten sixty seven. Now we'll get the math on that and we'll know how much per pound they are. But these were made in in known amounts, so uh, bagging can be done this way even. But I'll get the weight so we know how much it lost. The total weight loss of this batch of hamburger was 2,976 grams, about six and a half pounds. The bags were labeled with the batch number, what it is, how much it weighed before it was freeze dried, and the date that it went into the freeze dryer. And then she bagged it in half pound and one pound bags. And again, the half pound and one pound refers to how much it weighed before it was freeze dried, not how much it weighs now. My new thermometers arrived. They say that they're from negative 40 to 120 but the scale actually goes from about a negative 50 to 130. They just the numbers go from 40 to 120. So hopefully they actually go for that whole range because negative 40 is about what the freeze dryer goes or a little colder and negative or and then positive about 125, 130 is about what they, the heaters are set to. So anyway, got my new thermometers. After all the bags are filled, she added a 300 cc oxygen absorber to each one and then heat sealed them close to the top, making sure that they're well sealed. And finally, just like I do, she adds a gross weight to the bottom corner of each bag so she'll know if they ever start to have any kind of problem with it allowing moisture to go through the bag. The cooked hamburger is all in bags now. Got six one quart bags and eight pint bags. We'll probably see more pint bags over this series than previously because it makes more sense for one person to put more things in pint bags. Let's get those in the bin. Okay. So, got a nice big empty bin to put six batches in. Yeah, so let's just get those all laid down in there. Oh, and the cute little pint bags. Okay, so that's set and now let's go get the time and power usage and then we'll get that reset for the next batch as soon as it's finished defrosting. <laughs> 